Hello and welcome. Today I'll be going over the changes that we are going to be seeing in the V Rising 1.0 official launch update, which is also coming out on May 8th for those of you who don't know. Uh, I covered a lot of this in the past, so anything that I mentioned in this video today, I'm going to leave links to everything in the description of this video so that you can reference it and you can go over it on your own time if you so wish. And if you don't want to read through any of the articles and stuff, you could always go through um, my playlist where I went through a lot of these details in the past. So yeah, let's get right into it. So the first thing they're going to show us here is Ruins of Mordium. After forgotten centuries, the slumbering peace of this domain of the Eternal Night is punctured by the marching of Dracula's Legion. Venture beyond the lands of man and into the shadows where ancient evil stirs. Wow, so it looks like we have kind of like a summoning circle of some kind here. We got, looks like some crazy uh, heretics or something going on here, maybe some cult like uh beings you know <laughs> looks like they're trying to summon something so that that looks interesting um that's usually my first thought when i see people in a in a circle doing weird gestures so yeah uh let's see we have a conflict zone all right gather your strength for war in the ruins of mordium an end game region that introduces dynamic conflict events to elevate your v rising experience Engage in skirmishes against Dracula's Legion of Noctum and conquer rifts to claim exclusive resources. All right, so it looks like we have some enemies here that we've pretty much seen only in art. This little guy right here, you guys might uh, recognize him. He's from uh, one of the previous dev updates. I'll probably put the picture on the screen right here. This guy right here looks like he's also from another previous dev update. Uh, one of the artwork. I'll also place their picture here. Uh, I don't see anything else in particular right away that stands out to me, but uh, yeah, we'll keep going. World improvements. Experience new discoveries in Farbane Woods. Dive into the heart of Ardoran in the Dunley farmlands and unearth the legend of Dracula's demise, where the iconic vampire king was defeated centuries ago by the Church of the Light. All right, and here's another image here. So it looks like we have some new areas to explore. So that's kind of cool. That's over in Farbane, it looks like. All right, cargo travelers. The arrogant humans of Ardoran now traverse the world, carrying precious cargo from location to location. Satisfy your thirst for blood and valuable loot at the same time by intercepting their caravans and further your rise to power. All right, so we got some caravans here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit if it lets me. Yes, it let me. Cool. Yeah, so we got, it's like a horsey with a big caravan. I uh, hate to break it to you guys, but I do not think this is realistic. <laughs> I mean, horses are pretty strong, but looking at this horse compared to the size of the cart, I feel like this should be like a two horse pole, but you know, that's besides the point. Continuing. Oh, so, okay, let's go back a little bit. So this one looks like a silver light one. You could tell by the outfit this guy is wearing. Um, let's see. This looks like Farbane or Dunley. Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, this is either like, I, I want to say this is uh, Dunley Militia, actually, now that I'm looking at this. And of course, here is one of the cards being uh, completely destroyed, it looks like, and seems to be like some weapons dropped on the ground or something, some other random resources. I'm not sure exactly what all these things are, uh, but yeah, that's exciting. Vardarin comes to life. More love has been put into the visuals of the world. The wilds have been sprinkled with touches of additional flavor and life to enrich the setting. Our new light engine lets us better handcraft the moods all across Vardoran. And uh, this is a little um, concerning, but it seems we have Behemoth on the way to his cave. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, Gore Crusher the Behemoth is one of the current bosses in the game that has been... Uh, part of the big three, I don't know if they're still going to be part of the big three by the time 1.0 comes out, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, the cave behind here is usually where they are. So seeing them walk up to the cave, to me, suggests that this is that Gore Crusher is now going to be 
a roaming boss. So I think we can pretty much conclude this based on this image. Um, so that's an interesting reveal. Uh, this is over in the silver light area that I can tell by the, um, the color of the ground, the dirt and the, uh, let's see the flowers and stuff. I don't see, sorry, not the flowers, the, uh, the shrubbery, but I don't see anything else in particular. So I'm just going to continue. The lighting looks good though. Looks really nice. And also the far bean area. So yeah, this looks really nice. Um, really cool visuals. I wish I could click on the images to make them bigger, but it's not giving me the option. So that kind of sucks, but you know, I digress. All right, shape your journey, new ways to play. V Rising now offers easy solutions to choose your level of difficulty. You can now choose between the brutal experience designed for seasoned vampires to test their wits against enemies and V Bloods with new advanced techniques, exciting twists to spice up the journey. Um, so we have a relaxed mode for those that favor exploration, building, and more relaxed combat. Uh, this is probably the more, uh, the kinds of settings I'm going to be using on my server. Um, if you're interested in joining a PVE casual 18 plus server, um, definitely check that out into the description. I'll leave a link, uh, for you guys to potentially join if you so wish. Standard is an experience focused on exploration, building, and challenging combat, and brutal face devastating challenges in a world with evolved adversaries. So they just use different pieces of art here. This is art from the trailer. This is also art from the trailer. And this is also art from the trailer. All right, continuing. Enemies. Dracula has been biding his time and gathering his power in the depths of the Shadow Realm. His servants flood the land, gathering blood to fuel his return. But Vardoran can only have one apex predator. Ride into Mordium, strike into the heart of Dracula's castle, pierce the Shadow Realm, and cut down history's greatest tyrant to claim ultimate supremacy. Dracula's Legion. So I guess this is a new uh, unit family, I guess you could describe it as. In a previous dev update, they talked about unit families as in like, groups of enemies that kind of belong with each other and uh it looks like dracula's legion is going to be a new unit family so that's going to be really interesting face off against a new enemy the fearsome draculan monstrosities of the legion of noctum battle with the mighty generals the highest echelon of dracula's court elena the hollow cassius the betrayer and valencia the depraved and of course we have one, two, and three. So these three enemies right here have showed up in previous dev updates. Uh, this little guy right here, I don't think has uh, shown up yet. So that's kind of interesting to see another um, enemy here. Simon Belmont. Prepare for an epic encounter with Simon Belmont as the legendary vampire hunter ventures into Vardoran. Do you have the courage to stand toe to toe with the heir of the Belmont clan, master of the powerful whip? Improved magic combat. Your mastery of dark sorcery is more versatile than ever. Immerse yourself in newfound possibilities by unlocking spells in the order that best suits your playstyle. Unite with your clan and share a powerful well of passive magic bonuses. All right. Combat. New weapons. Draw your bowstring and pick off your foes with pinpoint precision. Unfurl your whip and lash out at your enemies with unparalleled deadly grace. With brand new weapons at your disposal, there are more methods than ever to dish out death. All right, so the whip is already being confirmed as a weapon, and it looks like we're also getting the longbow. Woo! Yeah. So I know a lot of people have been requesting the longbow for like the longest time. Like it's probably one of the most requested weapons in the game besides maybe a whip. Um, I, I've heard of like a few other suggestions too, but these two are definitely ones that come up all the time. Um, so I'm glad that they're basically uh, implementing the weapons that we want to see the most, uh, at least from what I can tell. So that's awesome. New unique weapons. Conquer all obstacles with an all new arsenal of Apex legendary weapons, each one specifically tailored to different play style. Choose your armament. All right. And it looks like uh, when we get the highest tier of weapons, they brought back this image. This was from a previous dev blog that they showed us. Uh, so this is going to be really uh, interesting. It looks like your, well, this is the E ability for axes. So 
if you're improving the E ability, chances are they're also going to also improve the Q ability and kind of add new effects depending on your upgrades. So that's going to be really cool for late game. All right. Ancestral weapon upgrade. No matter how you rise, never abandon your weapons of war. The Ancestral Forge now upgrades your legendary weapons to keep up with your progress, meaning you never have to choose between a new tier of tool and your favorite set of blood drinking axes. Okay. Gouging Grand Sickle. Okay. It's interesting. Gouging Grand Sickle. Weapon level 26. Okay, so 20, 23, 26. So it looks like there's going to be different um, different tiers of the same weapon, uh, depending on what you decide to upgrade it with. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, my eyes. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me switch images. Maybe. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Skitter to safety as the spider. Shit. Oh my God. Spider form? Spider form. <laughs> oh my god. No. I'm sure half of you in the in the in you know the comments are gonna be rejoicing over this and the other half is gonna be like, oh no. Well I'm one of the people that's gonna say, oh no, but you know, whatever. Skitter to safety as a spider. Change your form to help you give your enemies the slip and protect yourself from your enemies' watchful eyes and the burning rays of sunlight. By hiding in the soil itself, never be caught out and vulnerable again. Okay, at least they gave it a utility purpose. <laughs> Burying yourself isn't that bad. At least you don't have to see the spider, right? Right? <laughs> oh, I hate spiders, guys. I'm so sorry. I hope you got I hope you freeze framed over before I switch the image because I'm not going back. I'm sorry. And, and you know what? It's funny because I brought this up when I interviewed uh, Jeremy Bearson when I did um, when I asked him about like PVE questions and stuff like that. I asked him about spider form because one of you guys uh, suggested it as a question. Something else I was kind of wondering about is uh, why is there no spider form? Why specifically? Okay. We had <laughs> they, there people have been <laughs> asking us about arachnophobia mods. I'm one of those people. Forever. I'm not asking this and question you're asking for me. About, and you're asking about <laughs> spider form? Yeah, I have someone who keeps asking me about it. They're like, why is there no spider form? I the thing is, I have also been frequently <laughs> asked about spider form. I think it's fascinating because it seems like there's two very different camps that are both like, I would really like spider form. See, that's what server are settings like, are I for. would love if you could skip all spiders <laughs> in this game. And I feel like adding spider form would be like the the most divisive thing we could possibly do. It would not only <laughs> not only are there spiders, and do you have to fight them for one of the one one of the like biggest upgrades at one point in the game, but also you have to become a spider now. You have to turn into a spider. And he literally was like, "Why spider form?" And now I'm just like, "Wow." So we actually do get spider form. Uh, spider form is probably one of the most requested forms in the game. So I'm not that surprised, I guess. But at the same time, I'm just like, wow, <laughs> I hate spiders. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, moving on. New armor. Elevate your vampire status with an entirely new level of armor and equipment and get geared up to face the greatest threat to your rule yet. On your way to greatness, tailor your garments to your whims with a fresh variety of armor sets that enhance different styles of play. All right, so we have one set right here and another set right here. This this one looks more like um maybe some kind of like rogue set of some kind. It looks like maybe just visually cuz a lot of times rogue sets are very um like just tra traditionally in other games they've usually had um, a lot less uh, covering of the body, a lot more um, ease of movement kind of stuff. Whereas like something like the first one is more for kind of um, like warrior types or like paladin-ish kind of uh, play styles, if that makes sense. But, you know, that's the best way I can probably describe it just looking at these images. Um, so, yeah, we'll move on. Relocate your castle. 
Trapped in your first home in Farbane, now using nothing more than a little vampiric magic, you can move from any plot in the world to any other available one by laying down the framework and pressing a button. So, oh yeah, so this is something I actually covered in a previous dev update. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much here, but uh, definitely make sure to check that out. It's going to be in the description. All right, here we go. Seamless item management. Forge advanced stations for crafting and massively increase speeds and enjoy multiple UI improvements that make the whole process much smoother. Looks like we have a few new buttons here at the bottom, so that's interesting. New castle decor. Your lair reflects your inner vampire. To that end, we're providing you with even more decorations to show off your impeccable and superior taste. Music player. Craft your music player and unlock the haunting melodies of Vardoran. Immerse yourself as familiar music echoes through the corridors of your castle. And hold on a second. They're laying on the couch. They're not just sitting on the couch. That's really interesting. So I guess you get to lounge around now in your castle. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. Um, all right, moving on. Customization, eternal elegance. Elevate your vampiric persona with enhanced customization options. Unleash your creativity as you color dye your outfits while displaying any appearance you want. With 10 plus new armor sets to mix and match however you like, you can achieve any fantasy. All right, so just kind of looking at these images, I love this one. Red and black are my favorite colors, uh, so I'm a little biased, but, you know, it looks like we have a nice little range of them. But I like that you can, like, scroll through and just kind of look at the different color combos, because I'm sure there's going to be something here for everyone, you know, with this, with this level of uh, variety, so that's kind of neat. All right. Additional features. Gamepad support. All right, let me zoom out a little bit for this. It's finally here. Introducing gamepad support for PC, offering a new hands-on action-packed V Rising experience, including a reimagined HUD user interface crafted specifically for gamepad enthusiasts, ensuring a seamless and immersive gameplay journey. Wow, uh, that is wild. <laughs> so just looking at this, um, it looks like there's quite a bit of things. Um, it looks like there's going to be a difference between pressing and holding buttons, depending on what you're doing. Maybe I don't know, um, but yeah, this is this is actually looks pretty pretty clean. I, I like the way it looks. All right, next uh, achievement system: introducing Steve achievements and PlayStation trophies. Conquer bosses, explore the map, reach pivotal progression milestones, and ultimately triumph over Dracula himself. Gear up, level up, and prepare to rise for glory. Gear up, level up, and prepare to rise to glory. Are you ready to claim your victory? <laughs> wow, actually, I'm not surprised there's going to be Steam achievements and PlayStation trophies whenever, you know, the PS5 version comes out of the game. Um, this is pretty standard for most games, so it's really nice to see that they are introducing that and that they're clarifying that here. Uh, I know that was a question that kept coming up. I actually asked, um, one of the devs about this, uh, a while ago, one of my previous videos. Are you going to add any Steam achievements when 1.0 comes out? Maybe. Well, I guess the answer was yes. <laughs> All right, here we go. New music. Take in the melancholic tones of a lost vampire empire in ruins of Mordium. Face off against Simon Belmont with familiar Castlevania tones and brace yourself for the epic showdown against Dracula with our end boss symphonies. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, going back really quick because I, I kind of glossed over this, but yeah, the music player, by the way, guys. I am pretty sure is not something that comes with the DLC pack because when you look through the DLC, actually, I'm going to show you guys. So when you look through the DLC uh, page from yesterday uh, through the blog, uh, it tells you like the different items that they're going to show. I mean, I can go over this uh, a little bit later, right? Uh, but basically, uh, you know, you get Alucard's outfit. Just to clarify, the wolf form variant, you, you know, was Soul the, war, uh, Soul the Wolf. That's why you have the white wolf skin. And uh, the human form variant is Maria Renard. 
And the toad form variant is Guise of the Flea Man. So just kind of clarifying there for anyone who is a little bit confused on that. Uh, and also, I feel like I didn't do a very good job of explaining that in the initial video, though I did mention that like in uh, the comments section and a few other things. So there you go. Uh, then you also have the coffin, ancient symphony throne, five variants of ancient symphony wallpapers, and ancient symphony floor pattern. We have the wallpapers, so we have the gate. So this gate is a castle door with servant lock variant, so that's cool. Four variants of ancient symphony stairs and ancient symphony carpet, corner and straight T-section, X-section, and all that. Here are the staircases. Here are the um, candles that we saw on the pillars. Here are the windows. And let's see what else we got here. Um, we have a bunch of statues, which I mean, you can see here. I'm not going to go too far into it. I kind of went over this yesterday. Uh, there was one other thing I think I wanted to point out. Oh, yeah, the hairstyles. So the hairstyles, uh, we're getting, uh, five hairstyles, I believe. So we have, um, these four that are more femme, right? And then we have uh, the fifth, which is, I think, the Alucard hairstyle, I think. Or maybe, no, I'm sorry. There's four new hairstyles. They're all, like, mostly femme. Uh, this is the one we saw in the uh, thing yesterday for the uh, Legacy of Castlevania Premium Pack announcement as far as, like, the clarification of what's included. And then, of course, we have these hairstyles. So they all look really neat. And I think that was it that I wanted to go over. Okay, cool. So yeah, the music uh, that's included in this pack is just the music. It's not the music box itself. So the music box is something that everyone's going to have access to. Um, so that's really cool. Okay, continuing. Uh, we already talked about the, mu the new music, which is awesome. And I just went over this. It looks like there is a uh, Maria Renard statue as well, which I didn't notice last time. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, then we have the shape-shifting. That's what I just talked about right here. Okay, the cosmetics. Uh, of course, we have the new hairstyles, like I said earlier. And then we also have the new saddle for our horses. So, um... Oh, so it does say sport five new hairstyles. That's interesting. So we do get five. Okay, I was right. So the yellow card uh, hairstyle is new. We haven't had that before, so that's cool. All right. And uh, yeah, you can see them all here. Oh, and then, of course, we already did. Uh, of course, they have like the Secrets of Gloomrod stuff, which um, last year's update. So if you're already playing the game, you already know what this is about. If you're not already playing the game, I'm not going to go over it here, but make sure to take a look at it at some point. Um, the link is going to be in the description for this article that I'm showing you guys right now. So make sure to click on that when you get a chance. And of course, we get to the end of the page. So yeah, there's a lot of really cool, neat stuff coming in 1.0. Um, some questions that I get a lot, just to kind of, uh, like, I feel like this was a pretty good recap, but there are some things I do want to clarify because I do get these questions a lot. So uh, one of the things I wanted to go over is the fact that, yes, you can play this game solo if you really wanted to. I played most of this game I've played by myself. I've soloed the bosses and stuff like that by myself usually. Um I do play I do have a server. I do play on the server and I have a good time on the server. Sure, great. Um but I have the option to also play alone and that's also how I do a lot of my castle decorating. I do by myself as well. So um, yeah, that's definitely a possibility for anyone who's looking to, who prefers to play solo. That is a thing you can play solo. So uh, right now, the, the default modes for the game are you can do like a private game where it's like solo or you can have, you know, people who uh, you want to invite maybe some friends who have to be on at the same time you are in order for that to work. Um, it's kind of similar to what uh, is in Power World right now, where you can kind of do the similar thing, where you could play with friends who you give them an invite code and they join you. It's kind of similar to that. So um, there's that. You also have the option to uh, play on someone else's server. There's also public servers that are uh, put up. They're official servers by um, the devs themselves. I think they host those servers. So you could do that if you're not really sure whether or not you want to host your own server. 
Um, if you're not sure about server settings and things like that, I made a guide a long time ago, almost a year ago, I think now, uh, going over vRising server settings. I will be doing an updated version of that video for uh, the 1.0 release because there will be new settings, I'm sure. Um, so if there's new settings and there's a lot of new stuff, I'm definitely going to redo that video just to make sure that the new information is included in there so that you guys can have that to reference for, you know, if you need to send it to someone who is setting up a server or if you yourself are trying to set one up. And that video, by the way, will also uh, be able to give information for people who maybe aren't setting up a server, but they want to make changes to their game after they initially made their game file. So that'll be uh, a more in-depth uh, guide. So keep an eye out for that coming sometime next month, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, another question I get a lot is, uh, you know, is, is this game worth it? Well, obviously, you know, I've been playing this game for like, what, two years almost now? I'd say like a year and a half. And honestly, I've had like a really, really great time. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much and seeing all these changes i mean i i really can't i can't really give it more of a thumbs up than i currently am i guess as far as like yeah totally play it um but yeah uh i think that's something that you guys are gonna have to kind of decide for yourselves that being said uh i don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing to you know just even just give it a try um you definitely want to do that so yeah um Another thing, too, that a lot of people ask about is stuff like um, decorating and castles and stuff, because I, I do have a playlist for my V Rising castles. Um, that playlist will be continuing into the future. Uh, the only thing is that the castles I currently have made now might not be compatible with the new version. So the chances... Um, the chances of that still being a thing to view uh, in real time for myself is, is, I think, pretty low. But the devs haven't really confirmed anything yet as far as whether or not we're going to have to wipe our servers and stuff to implement the new updates. So I guess we're just going to have to keep our eyes and ears open for that one just to know for sure what the plan is. Last time when we got Gloomrot, uh, we did have to wipe servers. That was something that was kind of needed in order to update everything. So I assume that is probably going to be the case this time around. Um, but yeah, uh, just keep an eye out for that information. If I find out anything about that, I'll make sure to if if it's if it comes out with more information with other stuff, I might do a video on that, too. But if not, I might just put out a post in the YouTube community tab or on my Twitter and or on my Twitter. I mean, um, so, yeah, keep an eye out for all those things. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think of the 1.0 changes? Is there anything you're looking forward to? Is there anything you're not looking forward to? Um, what are some of the things that, you know, maybe you're worried about or that you think are really cool or that you're super excited about? You know, just I just want to hear. I love talking to you guys in the comments about these things and even just theory crafting I find really interesting. For those of you who don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I'm a Shiloh East Queenly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube at 5 o'clock p.m. PST, usually on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays every week. Uh, sometimes it does vary, but I post my schedule in the YouTube community tab, usually like sometime on Sundays, so you guys can kind of see ahead and, and kind of get a grasp for when I'll be streaming. So feel free to stop in, say hi, say hello. Uh, later today, I'm going to be streaming V Rising. I'll be doing a decorating stream. I'm working on my last castle before the 1.0 update. So if you are interested in checking that out, please feel free to stop it and say hello. I definitely welcome that. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, Sholo out.